Wild Robot by Peter Brown, narrated by Fraser and Alicia Reedman. Chapter 76, The Broken Robot. Geese and otters were bustling all around Roz. They were pulling arms and legs out from the robot pile and pressing them against her body. They were hoping to hear whoop sounds and that the robot limbs would snap right into place and Roz would return to her old cell and life on the island would go back to normal. But nothing happened. No matter what they did, the limbs wouldn't attach. Our robot's body was too badly damaged. I'm sorry, Ma, said Brightbill, his voice trembling. I thought this would work. It is okay, son, said Roz calmly. I am lucky I can still think and speak. The animals tried to smile at their poor friend. They couldn't hide their sadness. Roz was a mangled wreck, and there was nothing they could do to fix her. The robot wanted to be strong for her son and her friends. She wanted to ease their worried minds and tell them everything would be fine. But Roz knew that everything would not be fine. She looked down at her broken body. Then she looked up at the geese and the otters and said, I will need some help getting home. Chapter 77. The Meeting. Strong, nimble creatures carried Roz up the sea cliffs and across the island. They carefully propped her up inside the nest. They built a fire. And then they left the robot with her son. Roz and Brightbill sat there, staring at the flames, until the goose finally said, Do you need anything, Ma? I could really use some new arms and legs. The robot chuckled at her own bad joke. That isn't funny, cried the goose. My mother is broken, and I don't know what to do about it. I am sorry for joking. Roz adjusted her voice to a more serious tone. I know you want to fix me, but there is nothing anyone here can do. At these words, her son looked away. Right, Bill, I am afraid we have some difficult decisions to make. I think you should arrange a meeting of our closest friends. We could use their advice. The goose disappeared out the door, and soon Roz's oldest and wisest friends were on their way. Loudwing was the first to arrive. She limped into the lodge on her injured foot and sat close to her robot friend. Mr. Beaver appeared next, followed by Fink and Swooper. Then Tawny curled up on the floor. Mother Bear was too badly hurt to make the journey, so Nettle came in her place. She sat in the garden with her enormous head jutting in through the doorway. Brightbill returned with Chit Chat, who was nursing her burned tail. The last one to crawl in was Crag, the old turtle. Once everyone was there, the meeting began. The group talked all through the night. They discussed the Ricos. They discussed what to do about Roz. They discussed how to keep the island safe. There were stark differences of opinion and tempers flared but by daybreak, the group had agreed to a plan of action. That morning, the dawn truce didn't take place in the great meadow. Instead, it took place in a small meadow by the foot of the mountain in front of the airship. Weary animals quietly hobbled into the clearing. The only sounds came from a gurgling brook that wound through the gathering and right past our robot. Roz sat in the wet grass. She was leaning against a rock. She looked so sad and frail. However, she still had her thoughts and her words, and for the moment, that was all she needed. Good morning, animals of the island. Roz's voice filled the meadow. I must look strange to you, all beaten up like this, but I hope I still sound like your old friend. Hundreds of heads nodded. You fought bravely yesterday. You risked your lives defending me, and I am eternally grateful. But many of our friends were wounded. Some may not recover. And there is worse news. Before the last Rico died, he told me that more of his kind would come to our island. They might already be on the move. And even if we defeat them, still more will come. My makers will not rest until all of their property has been retrieved. They want the dead robots. They want the broken parts. They want me. The crowd was silent. 
but I care about this island far too much to put any more lives in danger. And so, my friends, I must leave. Don't go, Roz. Next time we'll be prepared. We risked our lives so you could stay. I hear you. The robot's voice cut through the din. But look at me. My body is ruined, and the Rico said the only ones who can help me are my makers. What if he lied? Howled a voice. You can't trust those monsters. You are right, said Roz. He might have been lying. There may be no hope for me, but that is a chance I have to take. Animals, you have taught me to be wild. I want to be wild again, and so I must try to get the repairs I need. It is for the good of me and the island that I return to my makers. A calm settled over the crowd. They knew Roz was right. Chapter 78, The Farewell. Our robot had an army of animals at her command. She asked them to bring every robot part and rifle back to the airship. Absolutely everything had to go. It was the only way to be sure that the Ricos would never come back. The island animals had no trouble locating the remains of the dead robots. Retrieving those remains took a bit more effort, but they were up to the challenge. Teams of clever creatures returned with robot parts of different shapes and sizes. Smashed heads and broken rifles and twisted tubes and heavy bodies were all loaded into the ship until the entire island had been cleared. Even the tiniest scraps were collected. It's amazing what an army of animals can do. A light mist was falling when they finally heaved Roz through the ship's doorway. Her head slowly turned around to face the crowd of geese and beavers and owls and insects and foxes and raccoons and vultures and moose and bears and opossums and fish and deer and otters and turtles and woodpeckers and squirrels and frogs and hares and on and on. Every animal on the island had come to give the robot a proper send-off. Goodbye, you wild animals. Roz's voice echoed into the gray mist. The wild animals smiled. And then a few of them started to roar. Then more started to screech. And then more started howling and chirping and grunting. Soon every creature was hollering goodbye to Roz. Chorus of wild voices grew louder and louder, shaking the robot's body, rattling the ship, booming across the island and up into the clouds. And then their voices gradually died down to silence. Bright Bill fluttered up to his mother's shoulder. You understand why I must leave? said the robot. I understand, sniffled the goose. More Ricos could be headed here right now. I just do not know. There is so much I do not know. I think it is time I get some answers. Will I ever see you again? Said Bright Bill, wiping his eyes. You are my son, and this is my home. Said Ross. I will do everything in my power to return. Bright Bill hugged his mother's worn face. I love you, Mama. I love you, son. The goose fluttered back to his flock. The robot took one last look at her home. The door hummed closed. Chapter 79, The Departure. The airship's engines automatically fired up. Then the ship slowly floated above the island, turned to the south, and disappeared into the clouds. Chapter 80, The Sky. Our story ends in the sky, where a robot was being whisked away from the only home she had ever known. As Roz sat in the airship, broken and alone and speeding toward a mysterious future, she looked back at her miraculous past. Reader, it must seem impossible that our robot could have changed so much. Maybe the Ricos were right. Maybe Roz really was defective. And some glitch in her programming had caused her to accidentally become a wild robot. 
Or maybe Roz was designed to think and learn and change. She had simply done those things better than anyone could have imagined. However it happened, Roz felt lucky to have lived such an amazing life. And every moment had been recorded in her computer brain. Even her earliest memories were perfectly clear. She could still see the sun shining through the gash in her crate. She could still hear the waves crashing against the shore. She could still smell the salt water and the pine trees. Would she ever see and hear and smell those things again? Would she ever again climb a mountain or build a lodge or play with a goose? Not just a goose, a sun. Brightbill had been Roz's son from the moment she picked up his egg. She had saved him from certain death. Then he had saved her. He was the reason Roz had lived so well for so long. And if she wanted to continue living, if she wanted to be wild again, she needed to be with her family and her friends on her island. So, as Roz raced through the sky, she began computing a plan. She would get the repairs she needed. She would escape from her new life. She would find her way back home.